Welcome back to Copper Star Precision, the channel dedicated to getting you more points at your competitive shooting matches. I am doing a giveaway in the month of February for an MDT ground pod, their sort of entry-level bipod. If you haven't seen the video, 5,000 subscriber giveaway video, I will link that somewhere up here. Be sure to check out the channel while you're down there, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. But you have to follow the instructions in that video to win and some questions have been rolling through. So the idea of the giveaway is that you submit questions, that's your entry into the contest, and that those questions inform me about what content you guys wanna hear about. So that's what we're doing today. We're sort of taking a stab at some of the questions. A lot of the initial questions that came rolling in were about bags and bag selection. So when we talk about shooting bags, we're really talking about positional support bags. So there are other types of bags, like this bag is a bag for a front rest, right? Um, this is an Edgewood bag. It's designed for something that goes into a front rest. If you're shooting like maybe uh, F class or some bench rest, something like that. Likewise, oh, this big monster heavy rear bag with these rabbit ears is for the buttstock to slide in as again, sort of those sports dictate for F class or bench rest, something like that. So we're not type talking about those kinds of bags today. We are talking about bags that relate to NRL 22, PRS rimfire, PRS in general, that are used to build shooting positions off of barricades, tank traps, car tires, 55 gallon drums, etc. So this is for more of the run and gun style of shooting. And these support bags, you know, I have a lot of bags here. Uh, I do find use cases for all of them. You don't have to have this many, um, but you might find you prefer certain bags in certain situations. So let's talk about the gear I have. I will also mention uh, other brands. I'm not necessarily particular to any one given brand. I do have a lot of Armageddon gear stuff. I think they make wonderful products, but that's not to say that other companies uh, aren't just as good or even better. So with that being said, again, lots of questions. If you had to pick one bag, if I had to get rid of all of this stuff, I can only use one bag for a match. You're gonna need some sort of wedge-shaped bag. And for me, that choice would be a Armageddon Gear Schmedium Game Changer. So the Game Changer, as its name kind of implies, sort of changed the game, so to speak, when it came to sort of this uh, precision rifle style competition. And the idea is that this can sort of do it all. The Schmedium is the middle size, obviously, they have a pint size, which is a little bit smaller, and then their OG game changer is kind of larger. So you have small, medium, large. So Schmedium is right in the middle. And I like this with heavy fill. I'm gonna probably make a whole dedicated video about fills, to what these bags are filled with. I prefer, and again, a lot of this comes down to personal preference, but I prefer a heavier bag to a lighter bag until you get into something like these pump pillows, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. But the idea of a wedge-shaped bag is that it has some sort of wedge or some sort of place that can wrap around something. So again, I have a lot of Arm and Getting Gear products, you know, not endorsed by them at all to say any of this stuff. I think they make really fantastic stuff, but that's not to say that there are other companies doing something similar. So other things that come to mind for these wedge-shaped bags are gonna be like the Wee Bad Fortune Cookie, which also comes in five different sizes. And I think MDT just released a new bag called the Peanut, which looks very interesting. But you want something that can adapt to whatever barricade you need to shoot off of, that it can wrap around. So for example, here I am at one of the last matches we had to shoot off of a tripod. You know, you couldn't clip in, you had to use this as a barricade. So as you can see, the heavy fill for me, this heavy fill on the Schmedium size is about nine to 10 pounds. So quite significant. It stays on there and it, you know once it gets into position and you'll often see me at matches sort of like smack the top of the bag get it settled so all the sand or whatever fill is in here kind of holds its shape and now that stays constant and then when you have a rifle and youtube i am not handling rifles this is a wood stock with a big weight on the front of it this is not a rifle when you come into the bag like this if you have a balanced rifle then really nothing else needs to happen, right? You just find your target and you engage. So why would you choose one size over the other? And there are different options when it comes to these kinds of bags. Again, I think 
a wedge shaped bag is definitely a must. Most of the time you'll be using it as a forward support. So it's supporting the front of the rifle. However, these can also be used as rear support. So when you have a bipod in front of the rifle, what you're gonna do is you can use this as a rear support. And I've seen a lot of different ways that people do this. So one way, let's say that this again, just wood. Let's say that this is supporting the rifle. If I need something tall in the back, I'll usually stick my hand in the wedge part. And when I squeeze the bag, I can raise the buttstock of the rifle to aim the rifle lower. Um, and then I just settle it back down if I need to aim higher. I've also seen people, what's nice about these bags is because it's kind of like two triangles. Imagine squeezing this part, but having the bag sideways. So this is my rear support. The rifle is supported by a bipod in the front and I'm squeezing one half of the bag and I'm using that or I can use the other, other half here like that and I'm using that to squeeze the rear of the rifle. And what's nice about this medium size is when you get to the OG game changer size, it gets a little unruly um, depending on the size of your hands um, to use this as rear support. So again, why would you go with one or the other? I like the heavy fill. The Schmedium is, you know, sort of the Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold, right in the middle. Very popular. You'll often see me use the pint size because I think this, again, with heavy fill, works really well for rear support. You'll often see me use this on the 55 gallon drum when I have the bipod out front. And for me, with the, I know when I set my bipod two clicks, down and I use this as rear support, I'm pretty much level. So that's something you have to experiment with. Um, and you can kind of do that. You can kind of get an idea. They have the measurements of these bags online. Put a bi your bipod at a comfortable height and just see kind of what it takes, how much distance it would take to your specific butt stock, whether it be a stock like this or a chassis with a bag rider or something to get the gun relatively level. And if you're shooting at NRL matches, which are usually within a hundred yards, uh, most of them are going to be on flat ranges anyway. There are a couple ranges that obviously have different elevation changes, but that gives you a good idea of where to start. The other thing to recognize with these wedge-shaped bags, and if you go with the Game Changers or if you go with Weebad's Fortune Cookies, is kind of try and get an idea of the distance between the edge of the bag and where the middle of the bag is. So let's say that you know we're on the pyramid, right, which uses two by fours. So we're using this bag to kind of go over here like that. Now, when you have a rifle, and especially um, you know, magazine-fed rifles, you don't want to jam the magazine up against the uh, back of this bag. It does get a little bit more stable if you put some pressure into it, but if you're pushing against that magazine, you're going to cause feeding issues most of the time. So you kind of want to get an idea of how far this part to the middle is so that you can see if that matches up with the balance point of your rifle. Rifle balance points are extremely important. Um, so for example, this mock stock that I have here, let's see kind of where the balance point is. So it should be, yep, right around here. So if I put my hand out here, you can see it tips back. If I put my hand by the magazine well, we have a balance point somewhere right about there. So if we measure that, and I'm measuring to kind of this end of the uh, bottom metal, it's about three inches. So my balance point is three inches in front of the magwell. Now I encourage all of you to try and get a balance point on a rifle uh, that is in front of the magwell because it's gonna be very difficult to put your rifle on its magazine and balance it. You definitely wanna be balanced somewhere on the fore end of the stock or the chassis. And in order to do that, it usually involves adding weights or if you're gonna put a big heavy barrel on it, that can also help you get the weight forward. So. In that example we just used, that rifle is balanced about three inches ahead of the magwell. Again, you don't necessarily want to jam up against the magwell because it could cause feeding issues. That's why sometimes you see rifle chassis and stuff that have barricade stop built in. Gray Ops makes a great product that is a Arca clamp barricade stop. So it provides a nice firm contact point that prevents you from actually bumping into your magazine. I can put a picture of it up here. So these are some of the things that you have to take in consideration. So back to that, we have three inches, right? So this bag would actually be perfect for that rifle because if we look, it's about three inches from the edge of the bag to the middle. Again, this is the pint size game changer. And one more quick thing to mention, this is the sticky version. So there are 
uh, the bottom one side and the top have this sort of sticky material. And even on this really steep tripod, I could kind of wrap this around and it slides a little bit, but it's not really, it's not, if you get it positioned right, it kind of sticks. So it almost stays there on its own. I mean, that's a really steep angle. So imagine something like a rooftop stage. If you don't want the bag slipping, the sticky is a good uh, choice. These two here are just the regular wax canvas. Um, but let's continue down the line. So that was pint size is about three inches to center. Get this settled in my hand here. Schmedium looks like it's about four inches to center. And then OG game changer. If we were to get that settled, it's about five inches to center. So depending on how far that balance point is along the fore end of your rifle may dictate what size of sort of wedge shaped bag that you want to get. Just to sort of wrap up topics on game changer bags, again, pint size, medium, and OG. Why do I have two OGs? One is the sticky one that I mentioned, which does help in certain situations. And then both my medium and OG are from Area 419, which actually make these patches sewn in for plates, which we're gonna talk about later in the video. But um, if I were to pick one bag, and if you don't you know, I encourage you to watch the rest of the video, but if you're just here for the simple answer, one bag would be the Area 419 Schmedium Game Changer that has this because down the line, you'll be able to adapt uh, plates to this or their Rail Changer system or their Rail Changer X system, which we'll talk about in a moment. So that is like the primary bag you need, some sort of wedge shaped bag. Again, it could be the MDT Peanut, it could be the Wee Bad Fortune Cookie or any other numerous wedge shaped bag. Coltac makes probably something, I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, I just chose to go here. I think they make great products. Again, sticky versions, wax canvas versions. They've held up, they're rugged. Uh, I like them a lot. Where would I go next if I were to buy another bag? I like kind of having a dedicated rear bag. And this is the Armageddon Gear X-Wing. I happen to like this just because it's light. Um, what I do is I actually keep this in my rifle case because I use this during the zeroing period. So my idea with packing my rifle case, I have all these bags in a separate backpack, right? But if I'm at the match, the first thing I do is I get my rifle case out and this is in it, my bipod is in it, my magazines are in it, and my rifle's in it, right? So I have everything I need to zero my rifle in one bag. So something smaller like this, um, this is the X-Wing, they make all, everyone makes like a rear bag. Um, you could even just take like a regular tube sock, fill it with rice, um, and that could be, you know, your squeeze rear bag. So I like this one. This one happens to have a QD mount. So again, if you were, I've actually never used this feature, but just so you know, this has a QD mount, so you could actually attach it to the buttstock of your stock if you have QD swivel studs attached. So it stays with the rifle. I've never really found a use for it like during a stage, um, but if you maybe you're trekking around and you gotta move to a zero location or something and you just wanna put everything on your rifle and carry your rifle, then it could serve a purpose, but you can probably save yourself 10 bucks by getting no attachment at all. I like this, it fits my hand well. Essentially, with most of these bags, there's usually like three positions. So in this orientation, it gets you a little taller when you squeeze it this way. And then here is a little bit shorter if you need something shorter. And then worst case scenario, you could kind of lay the rifle flat like this and just kind of come in and squeeze this way for some elevation. So it gives you three different sort of elevation ranges. Um, again, this is um, a, sort of a light fill. Most of my other bags are pretty heavy, but this is just nice to throw in my rifle case so that again, I have my rifle, my magazines, my bipod, and this, and my ammunition. And that's everything I need for the zeroing of the rifle. So I can get all that to the firing line and then worry about getting all the other crap out of the car um, before the match starts. So if you're late to a match and you just need to get your rifle out there, zeroed, you know, get your um, velocities, all that kind of stuff. Nice, easy bag to throw into the rifle case. So again, wedge-shaped bag, probably definitely necessary for this sport. Dedicated rear bag, it's a nice to have, it's a convenience, it's not totally necessary. Ultimately, what you end up practicing with is gonna be what works best for you. you know? So you have to practice with what the gear you have. You can't just rely, try and rely on the gear to make you a better shooter. You have to know how to use the gear. So maybe you've got a wedge-shaped bag, maybe you do or do not have a dedicated rear bag. Like I said, you can use the, the game changers for rear support uh, anyway. Um, maybe then you want to move into either like a pump pillow or what we call sort of gamer plates, so to speak. So we can talk quickly about pump pillows. Again, this is another Armageddon gear bag. This is their fat bag. This is, I think, their largest size. 
This has a lot of nice features, and the idea with this bag is that this just takes up space. And the idea is that it takes up space so that you can get a more solid shooting position in an awkward situation. So I've used this as actually a sort of front bag in, in stages where maybe you're not allowed to use a bipod. So it works well there. But the main feature of this bag, I got, went to Home Depot, I got these cords. It comes with a elastic cord. I just like this one better because I feel like this is the right length for my body type. I can drape it across my shoulder and it kind of always stays in this position on my side here. And the idea with this bag is that it can kind of fill in that gap if I'm gonna be kneeling on a stage, right, it fills in that gap so I don't necessarily have to get my elbow to touch my knee. Uh, usually when you're in a kneeling position, you're gonna to be touching your elbow to your knee, but if you have to get into a sort of a high kneel, this bag helps fill in that space so you're not trying to bring your knee too far up or your elbow too far down. So it fills in that space, I can come up here and do a super high kneel, something like that. Um, on a rooftop stage, you know, usually I have, I'll have this as my secondary bag because the idea on a rooftop stage is let's say the rifle is like this and the slope is falling away from you, you know, a pint size game changer may not give you the height you need. This bag can give you some of the height. If you need even more height, you can even put it under the pistol grip or under um, the grip here. And that gives you the height as rear support when it comes to things like rooftop stages. So having this has a lot of nice features. Essentially, it's kind of like a trapezoid shape, and it basically has this height, this height, and then this height. So again, in all three dimensions, length, width, and depth, uh, or length, height, and depth, whatever you want to call it, um, it's three different sort of heights, so you can kind of adjust it to how you need. Also, because it is kind of a wedge shape, let's say I was on a rooftop that's going like this, and I had to shoot down that way. Let's say that's, that's the direction of fire. I can kind of use this to counteract some of that slope of the rooftop. So if the rooftop is like this, I can use this bag to make a flat shooting surface, which is going to help the rifle not cant one way to the other. It's going to give me a flatter shooting surface to go off of. So that's why a wedge shaped bag like this, pump pillow, um, is good for taking up space. If you're in a seated position, you can even kind of like wedge this between uh, the back of your leg and your calf. So you don't have to sit all the way down, especially if you're not as flexible. And then it comes with these nice arm straps. So this always helps if you kind of get these all the way up and then it can just stay with you on the stage. And this gets you really nice and stable because then you can kind of just bring the butt of the rifle in here. And you almost have built in uh, rear support by squeezing this into your body. Sometimes we see positional stages. And what I would do with that is I would put this wedge shape up this way and if I have to do something standing unsupported, this takes up all the space here, if you're allowed to use bags. Usually they don't allow you to use bags, uh, all slings only, but just having this here makes this super rock steady when it comes to taking up that space. Because otherwise, you're doing that weird thing that you see you know, Olympic shooters do, where without the bag, you're like this, you're like shoulder width apart, and then you pop out your hip, and then you try and dig your elbow into the rifle and you're doing some weird thing like this. So having that bag there kind of lets you be in a more upright, natural position, at least for me. Again, depends on your body type. So pump pellet like this, um, pretty versatile. This size I like a lot. This is my most recent acquisition is this Coltac Mega Bag. And you've probably seen me use this. Um, it's as far as what this is filled with, this is actually filled with styrofoam beads. Um, the same thing that you would stuff a beanbag chair with. Um, so it's actually pretty light. Um, this is definitely lighter than my heavy fill Schmedium. You've probably seen me use this as a bunch of matches, like on the chair stage at last match. This just provides super duper rear support. Again, the length, the height, and the width are all different dimensions. So you have basically a tall position, a medium position, and then a low position. So you get three, diff three different options there when it comes to the height of the bag. You can use this as a chair. You can sit down on this. Um, this is extremely useful. Um, it also has those straps, so I don't know if I would ever find a need to do something like this, but again, if you practice with it and you find something that works, this can be invaluable. And if you have any questions about any of these bags and you see someone in a match using it, ask them to borrow it. Usually they're nice enough to let you borrow it for a stage. 
But ultimately, once you find gear you like, you're going to want to get it for yourself so that you can practice, you can dry fire practice, all of that good stuff, because that's what's going to really make you better. Not just buying gear to buy gear um, or always borrowing it because you're never going to have time to practice with it um, outside of the match. So I really like this. It's really versatile. Um, it's kind of ridiculous to like carry around, but it is actually super light. Uh, if I were to do it again, I filled this myself with the styrofoam beads. I'd probably just order it filled um, from them. You have the option. If you order it unfilled, it's a little cheaper and it saves you on shipping, but it's kind of hassle, uh, you know, getting the styrofoam beads into here. But really like this bag. And what you'll notice is these bags, most of Coltex bags have these Velcro strips. And this is for their backbone system, which is kind of like a plate that we're going to talk about here in just a second. But just so you know, other manufacturers have different systems for also attaching these to the rifle via some sort of plate adapter, Arca adapter, etc. I don't have that plate because I have these other plates. I don't see a need why anyone would really attach this to a rifle. I mean, I guess if you had this on the 55 gallon drum attached to your rifle and you put this down on the drum, you're basically like just standing and, and going. So I mean, that, that's interesting, um, but to each their own. But most of Coltex bags do have these four Velcro loops for their backbone system, which then leads us to the segue into sort of plates. So why would you use a plate? And they're kind of called gamer plates because it kind of games the system. But you've seen a lot more of this come up. You've seen plates like these. You've seen things like the MDT Baker wings and all of that stuff. And the idea behind plates is that if you have a thin rifle stock like this and you have a bag, you put the bag down, you get it settled, and you have this thin rifle stock or chassis, you know, there's, a, there's quite a lot of possibility for this rifle to roll back and forth because you don't have a lot of surface area. Now, if you take a plate, and let's say that this is attached to the rifle, it's much harder to move, rotate this plate, cant it left or right, so that you get a better chance of having the rifle straight up and down, which is definitely important to be completely uh, vertical and, and sort of plumb to gravity if you're trying to make longer range shots. So I have two different plates here. I recently picked up the Area 4191 to use with these game changer bags that I have, but I started with uh, this. This is another Armageddon Gear bag. This is sort of their flat bag, but this is the Gray Ops plate. And the way that this plate works is there's sort of a quick release lever in here that has an Arca clamp. So again, you have to basically have an Arca rail uh, for this to work. Uh, and then it has these sort of four hooks and Velcro. I really like this system. Um, these Velcro hooks work really well. And this is the their Pro version. And I believe the only difference between the regular and the Pro version is that this includes brass weights. If I can get that off. So if you look on the underside here, it does have brass weights. So if you're using this without um, this specific bag attached, um, then this gives you some grip because they're a little bit textured here. It gives you some more weight. Um, kind of, again, if you put this on the balance point of your rifle, sort of everything is going straight down. So this comes off relatively easily. And so if I just had this plate and I wanted to use this bag, let's say for whatever reason I don't want to use uh, this flat bag any part of the stage, this plate sits and kind of grips very nicely. And again, it kind of, it's harder to rotate something that is has a bigger surface area than just the stock of your rifle. So it works really well like that. And what's nice about this is they sell a accessory, which I don't have, but I'll put a picture of up here. It's kind of like these hooks and then they call it like a little bikini. And what that does is it can actually, it's just a couple of loops that will loop in um, a game changer style bag. So if you don't want to go with the next plate that we're gonna talk about and you have this plate or you already bought your game changers and they don't have the attachment points for other uh, sort of more proprietary systems, you can buy that little bikini thing that cl clamps into this and will hold like a game changer style bag. So that is definitely another option. That being said, um, I did invest in the Area 419. This is their Rail Changer X. And this is kind of a unique system. I like it. Um, I like keeping this flat bag on my Gray Ops. So that's dedicated to sort of that style bag when I need something, you know, just heavy and flat. And then when I'm, you know, like if I'm transitioning to tank trap tip from tank trap tip to tank trap tip. So tank trap tips are your regular four by fours. 
And then you've got your Schmedium Game Changer, which fits really nicely on a tank trap tip, just like this. And then I'm going from tip to tip. I don't have to worry about taking the rifle off, taking the bag off. I just move the thing as one unit. So because I'm able to move the entire rifle as one unit, it saves you a little bit of time when it comes to different transitions. And the way this works is, it's probably easier to see on this one. There's a series of little tabs that line up with tabs here. So this is nice because this itself is actually Arca lock. So you can actually lock this to a tripod that has an Arca clamp. So if you wanted to do that and then put the bag upside down on it for whatever reason, but then you have these little outlets. So you just come over here, you open this up, you slide this into its appropriate hooks, which can take some finesse. And of course, if you're trying to do it on video, it always gives you trouble. So we've got it into the back hooks and then this lever here slides that last hook. So we push that in, get it situated, and then everything locks into place. And now that bag is firmly attached and it's not going anywhere. Um, so it's gonna stay with the rifle the whole time. They also sell this nice little thumb position and you can put it on either side so it's ambidextrous. And the idea of that is when you're sort of on the prop and the rifle's in here, you can use your thumb. That's a good index point. So you, you put your thumb here and then you can grab the bag. So if, if it was over here, you put your thumb at the index point so it's always in the same spot. And then you're squeezing and grabbing the bag, pulling the whole system into whatever obstacle that you're on. Um, really well thought out. I like it a lot. I've been using it the last couple of matches. Um, and this allows me to kind of switch bags. This has the standard fill. So this OG larger game changer is actually lighter than the Schmedium with the heavy fill. So this is about six and a half pounds. So depending on if I'm doing a lot of movement, maybe I don't want as much weight on my rifle, I might use that. And when it ties it all together, we talked about balance point of the rifle and why you might choose one bag over another based on sort of the distance. When you have that attached to the rifle, it kind of basically pulls the center of gravity of that rifle and that balance point sort of to this bag, right? So you're adding a bunch of weight really close to the center of gravity. Um, so it's really gonna influence where that center of gravity is when it's attached to the rifle. And you'll find that if you clamp a bag like this, especially a heavy one onto a rifle, it will pretty much dictate where that balance point is gonna be. Lastly, we'll talk about a sort of really specialty bag. I brought this up on the last one because I use a quick detach spur mount, which has very, it's a very high scope mount. And when it comes to things like shooting off of the seat of a chair through the chair opening, um, oftentimes I'm blocked by the back of the chair. And this is also by Area 419. This is their grip changer. It's got that sticky sort of surface that some of these other bags have. And again, it's just an Arca clamp. And it, what's really nice is it's super low profile. So another thing that I forgot to mention with sort of the uh, game changers here, if you can see the sort of the side profile, it also depends on how wide they are, right? So if you're trying to get into something narrow, I remember uh, before I had this, there was the stage two years ago, and I still remember it. If you remember those cages that go around those giant like potable water tanks, really narrow slits, there may be only like four or five inches, uh, you know, space. These, some of these bags won't fit through those openings, those portholes. So if you have like a really thin porthole, um, this is something that's sort of invaluable. It just gives you a little bit of surface, just enough, that, but it's thin enough and, and low profile enough that you can get into some really tight spots. Otherwise, you're basically just trying to balance something, a rifle on a porthole, and it's not always uh, as stable as you want it to be. So this is definitely not a necessity whatsoever. Um, it's kind of really nice to have. Uh, in very specific situations. But when you get to a certain level, if you can have something that gets you one or two extra points, that could make the difference. If you're just starting out, you know, this is you know, way down the line. So if I had to prioritize bags I would get, you need definitely need a wedge shape kind of bag. That bag can kind of serve double duty. Um, and then you can think down the line if you want to get a dedicated rear bag or not. After that, it's probably depending on your shooting style and the type of matches that are often put on in your area or the sort of courses of fire that you expect to see once you get a feel for the game. Um, either sort of a plate bag is really nice, especially this one. I like this one a lot. 
That's what I started with, the, the Gray Ops plate. I think this with the flat bag is a great combo. And then probably a tie between that and sort of a pump pillow. And again, like I said, a lot of people have a bunch of this gear at matches, so ask them to borrow it and sort of try before you buy. If you are gonna buy something like uh, these game changers, I believe our, uh, Area 419 produces all three sizes with this attachment. So if you ever think you're gonna go with a plate in the future, so if you're ever gonna get a plate style system, you might as well get the bags from Area 419. I also know that WeBad, um, for an add-on option, will sew in compatible things for this system. So if you're gonna go with the sort of the wee bad family of bags, that's also an option. It's definitely something to think about down the line if you're, you know, think you're gonna be in this sport for a while. Um, these plates are uh, definitely uh, really nice to have when it comes to that. That pretty much covers most of the gear that I use. If you guys use other gear that you find super advantageous that's helping you score more points, let me know down in the comments. I hope this answered some of your questions. Like I said, I'll probably make a whole nother dedicated video about fill and considerations. For me personally, I'm usually going with the heavier fill, especially on all these kinds of bags. Um, when it comes to the pump pillows, you probably want those as light as possible. So either like a get light fill or whatever their standard fill is that is, is light because otherwise it becomes too heavy to manage on the clock. And uh, besides that, you know, get yourself a Schmedium Game Changer or whatever the equivalent size um, Wee Bad Fortune Cookie is, or check out the new MDT Peanut. Like I said, I have no affiliation to any of these companies, Area 419, Armageddon Gear, none of them. I just kind of evolve what I use throughout uh, my career, and this is kind of what works for me. So definitely a wedge-shaped bag for me. A rear bag is really great, especially in the morning during zeroing because it easily fits in my rifle case. I love the plates and the pump pillows really can make for some creative shooting solutions that uh, help take up space and get you rock solid and stable on props. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments while you're there. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Put notifications on because again, we're giving away that MDT bipod. Go check out that previous video for how to enter into that. And until you see you next time, as always, score more points. Oh,